It's been nearly three weeks since three men found dead outside of a friend's house in Kansas City. Days after going over there to watch the Chiefs game, the controversy just keeps growing. With family members of the three guys furious as everyone awaits the toxicology reports. The living friend, Jordan Willis, whose home they'd gone to, never contacted police, didn't really contact anyone, says he didn't know the three friends were dead, frozen in the backyard for two days. Yet the authorities say there were no signs of foul play. Now it turns out there was a fifth friend there that night. That guy identified as Alex Weimer, who was a childhood friend of the three men. Says he got to the home at about 7 p.m., left around midnight, when he claims the four men were still awake watching an episode of Jeopardy. Now, that contradicted statements made by Jordan Willis's attorney, who said last week he, meaning Willis, was asleep. He was asleep on the couch. The last memory he has is of le leaving uh, the front door. He doesn't know what happened with them until you know when the police came Tuesday night to his house. Now, he's changed his statement, now claiming his client went to sleep while the friends continued to hang out. When he would have people over his house, sometimes, um, as people do, they get tired. They're, they're people who are very close to you. Um, and then you feel comfortable going, going to bed and allowing them to leave whenever they want to leave. Now, the families of the three men, 38-year-old Ricky Johnson, 37-year-old David Harrington, and 36-year-old Clayton McGinney, are furious that this new revelation has led to no updates in the case. Last time we saw him, they were leaving the house, but he didn't know that they had left, so that doesn't make much sense. I think a lot of people know more than they're saying. You can't tell me he didn't know those crimes were back to the backyard. How do you not know there's three dead bodies in the back porch? Meanwhile, Willis's family is standing with him. His father defending his son in a statement. He would never in a million years do anything. These were all good friends of his. These were all people he went to school with. He took them to a football game the day before. Now, we are still awaiting the toxicology reports, which could shed a lot of light on exactly what happened. Joining us now is Joseph Scott Morgan, who is one of the leading experts on the coroner system in the United States. He's been following the story closely. Thanks a lot for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right. So what exactly are we going to learn uh, from this toxicology report? Uh, thanks for having me, Dan. Uh, the reality is this. They're going to do what's referred to as a qualitative finding, which means they're going to identify whatever substances were in these gentlemen's systems collectively. Uh, and it's very, it's kind of referred to as a standard panel that we run uh, at autopsy. We're looking for everything from opioids, cannabinoids, uh, benzos, uh, cocaine metabolite, all these other things. And of course, the big one out there that everybody's talking about, of course, is fentanyl. And those are all going to be they, they will be qualified, and then they'll do a quantitative result, and that's what's taking so long at this point in time, I think, relative to the toxicological findings. Uh, they will, you know, every drug out there, uh, even some that you might be surprised about, has a therapeutic level. That is, those drugs that we can take and we're not going to die from them or slip into a coma, they're looking for these levels to see if they le reached levels of lethality, if, in fact, there is anything in their collective systems. Now. My big issue with this case, Dan, is that I don't think there were any lightning strikes that day. Uh, I don't think that there's any trauma. So we can't have people that just three adult males, relatively healthy from what we know, they just don't spontaneously fall over dead in this close proximity to one another. So I have to think that there is some kind of agent at work here in their system. Right. Um, my, my big thing here is how carefully did they examine the scene? I hope that any kind of drinking containers, vessels, anything that were outside with those remains, um, that they were collected, that they are being analyzed. It's not just the bodies alone. Mm -hmm. And anything within that house, I don't know if the cops have served, uh, served a search warrant on this residence to collect anything that may have been in there. Because, look, we have to, we have to come to an agreement that this is not normal, that right. this is abnormal. It's an outlier. Right. And, and, and there's also no way this could be alcohol. All right. There's no way no. three guys all die of alcohol poisoning and all freeze in the same area. There's just no way. 
right? No, it, it, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Unless you're talking about something like bathtub gin, all right? We know that that's not the case, uh, where it would be so toxic that it would take them to their knees. So the answer lies elsewhere, and that's what's so important here. Uh, and one other thing to go along Real with quick, yep. the, yeah, uh, relative to the gentleman that slept for 48 hours, did he ingest something and may not have known about it because he's lost two days here, we're talking about, mm. if not more than that. So that's going to be key as well. I doubt that they drew blood on that guy. Though. Yeah. All right. Well, we're still going to have to wait a couple weeks, apparently, yeah. uh, before the results come in. They, they said something like uh, eight weeks. Uh, Joseph mm -hmm. Scott Morgan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.